Portal is an incredible puzzle game where objects can transport through the wall and appear in a completely different area. Today, we're going to take Portal concepts and apply them to our level design in Mario Maker 2. We'll show off the contraptions, explain how they work, and give you ideas to use in your courses. Let's get started. These contraptions come to us from an incredible course called Aperture Portal Test Lab, made by a maker who calls himself Nintendo. The concept for these contraptions is to make it feel like the player or items are being teleported across the screen to different areas. These contraptions and ideas will work in every single retro game style. I'm going to talk about two of the contraptions in this course, starting with the simple one first. This level uses custom auto scroll to lock the screen in place while showing half a block on the right and half a block on the left of the screen. To make this happen, we need to scroll stop the entire level horizontally by placing ground above and below this dark line all the way across the course. Next, we're going to build our room with walls on either side and a door in the top middle of the room. We can add custom auto scroll near the bottom middle of the room to make sure that it locks in place. A guide is to put it one tile to the right of the door so it moves to the right slightly when the player enters the zone. The reason this works is the custom auto scroll is supposed to move the screen downward, but the horizontal scroll stop is preventing it from moving at all, so it just locks the screen completely. Now it's time to create our portal. We're going to take one of these hard blocks out and replace it with a cloud block that Luigi can go through. We're going to decorate this with ice blocks to make it feel like the blue portal from inside the portal game. As you see, Luigi can't go through it because the screen is locked in place, so we're going to have to put a hard block on a track with one end overlapping with the cloud block to force him to move through the portal. Next, we need to make the portal he will appear from, so we're going to swap another block with a cloud for Luigi's exit. This time we're going to put question blocks to decorate it as the orange color as if it's the other portal in the game. We're going to put a fast skull platform on a track to launch Luigi up with a wall to hold him in place. A bumper combined with ground tiles will make sure he has nowhere to bounce but left back onto the main screen. We can add a sideways trampoline on a conveyor belt as another layer to move him even faster back into the zone. Now when Luigi gets pushed into the portal, he will magically appear in the next chamber. Our next setup is going to be a little bit more complicated, but it's going to let Luigi throw things to the right and have them appear from the left side of the screen and vice versa. To make this happen, we need to first set up the room the same process as before. Make a room the size of our screen with a door top and center, add hard block walls on the edges, and add custom auto scroll in the bottom middle of the screen about one block to the right of the door. We'll make two portals higher up this time on left and right of the room, decorating with our cloud blocks with ice or question blocks for the color of the portals. We're going to need some extra space for our secret contraptions, so higher up works better for this one. The on-off block is the essential element to making this teleportation effect happen, so we place it here where the shell, we'll call her Shelly, will hit it before dropping. With this blue dotted line block, Shelly the Shelmet will be stuck here until another on-off is triggered on the other side of the screen. Underneath that block, we have a note block, which will bounce Shelly back up once the switch is hit on the other side. Now we need a way for Shelly to bounce and come back through the portal, so we add cloud blocks here. We need to use a slope to get the shell back up to the same level it was thrown, and a one-way gate to make sure when it is thrown it can still reach the on-off switch. Now on the other side, we need a different Shelmet that appears when the on-off is triggered. We'll call him Sheldon. We need to place a trampoline above it on a red dotted line block so that the moment the switch is hit on the right side, this trampoline will fall and make Sheldon appear on screen. One strange game mechanic is that Sheldon will launch left first unless we place a POW block above it. We put this block right here so that Sheldon will launch right first and appear quicker for the player. Now we need a way for Sheldon to hit another on-off switch to bring Shelly back on screen on the right side. We add an on-off block here and a cloud block to let Sheldon reach it. 
Just like on the right side, we can place a dotted line block on top of a note block to stall Sheldon until the on-off switch is triggered to spring him into action. If you followed all of these steps, you should get this cool infinite effect where the shell comes from both sides of the room. Whew. Now that we have an understanding of how these contraptions are working, let's talk about ideas. We can block Luigi in with hidden blocks and make him figure out how to teleport upward to the door. We can use a shelmet through the portal to hit a question block and get a key to the next area. We can teleport Luigi again, but this time let him get an item that he needs to clear the room. Luigi can throw a P-switch through a portal to be able to move it into a tight room. Luigi can teleport to get a spring that can bounce up and destroy a bob bomb to trigger an on-off switch. Luigi can use two trampolines on top of each other to magically transport one to the left half of the room. For more crazy contraptions like this one, click on the playlist on the screen right now. For more Mario Maker 2 inspiration, be sure to subscribe and click the bell. I'm Aristotle, and thanks for watching.